Hey, it's Leo. Welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reviewing four books from my April TBR, as well as lifting up a nonprofit as I do each week. The books I will be reviewing today are Detransition Baby by Tori Peters, I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shreya, Evil Dead Center by Carol Lefebvre, and The Bush Still Burns by Terry Allen Moe. Each week on my channel, I lift up a different nonprofit to uh, highlight the work that they're doing. I will donate to them and I invite you to like, donate, follow, or share as you are moved or inspired. This week, the nonprofit I'm lifting up is the Marsha P. Johnson Institute. You can find them at marshap.org. Marsha P. Pay It No Mind Johnson was an activist, performer, and played a vital role in the start of the Stonewall Uprising in 1969. The Marsha P. Johnson Institute, their mission is to protect and defend the human rights of Black transgender people. They write, We were founded both as a response to the murders of Black trans women and women of color and how that is connected to our exclusion from social justice issues, namely racial, gender, and reproductive justice, as well as gun violence. There's also an interview with Executive Director L. Hearns um, on them that I connect that I commend to you. I'll link that down below. Uh, I will be donating to the Marsha P. Johnson Institute, and I encourage you to like, follow, donate, and learn more about Marsha P. Johnson and the institute named for her. Thanks! The first book I want to review this week is Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. This is not one that was on my April TBR, but I'll talk about later why I added it to my reading this week, and I'm glad I did. It is on the long list for women's prize for the Women's Prize for Fiction for 2021, but as I'm recording this earlier today, I saw that it did not make the short list. There was a controversy about this book being on the long list for the Women's Prize for Fiction because Tori Peters is a trans woman. Um, and there was actually some pretty uh, transphobic reaction and a, a letter that was written and signed by some so-called feminists um, who failed to recognize trans women as women. Um, I'm not going to go into that here. There's plenty of other uh, booktube and other resources where you can dive into that letter and how problematic it was and the women's festival or the women's prize response to it and so forth. So, um, I do support uh, Tori Peters as a candidate for the women's prize for fiction. Uh, trans women are women and I just want to be very clear about that. For me, however, I did rate Detransition Baby three and a half stars. So Detransition Baby is a story about uh, three folks. So there's Reese, a trans woman in New York City, her ex, Amy, now detransitioned as Ames, and Ames's boss, Katrina. Three years after Amy and Reese broke up, Ames gets Katrina pregnant. So Ames is clear about not wanting to have the identity father though is considering having the identity of parent. Um, Katrina does not want to be a single mother. And Reese, um, though she's living a pretty self-destructive and isolating life having affairs with married men, she's also been mourning her inability to be a mother. When Ames reaches out to her and suggests that maybe the three of them could form a family and raise the child together, uh, she considers it and Katrina considers it as well. So there's many conversations and flashbacks throughout the course of the book as we learn more about the characters and their story, and then also how they're going to navigate this conversation of whether or not they will or can make this alternative family. So the things I liked, it was very queer, very trans, and also the uh, questions of queer family building uh, I thought about the characters and the conversation and events for a few days and I, um, it really stuck with me. I did a lot of like watching of other reviews about it because I just wanted to kind of think more about the story. The characters' choices uh, frustrated me and there are a lot of parts where I didn't like the characters, but then I grew to root for them. And so I think that speaks well of the writing. So why did I give it three and a half stars? What are the things I didn't like? Honestly, it felt too long. It felt like maybe it could have been tightened or some scenes could have been cut out. I kind of wanted to just get through it there for a while. Um, I also felt like femini femininity was framed too much in contrast for these characters to violent toxic mas masculinity. And maybe that was to drive home some of the points about femininity, 
femininity and the conversations that these characters were having. Um, but I just didn't connect to it and found it uncomfortable. If you're looking for a deeper dive conversation to really get into the story, uh, there's a great video between two booktubers, um, The Sunny Book Nook and Perks of Steph. They spend at least an hour diving into the story, so I will link their show of that down below. For me, it was a three and a half stars. But for many, it was a four or five stars. I know there were many who were rooting for it to win the Women's Prize for Fiction because they loved it so much. Um, there's a lot to chew on in the book and you may enjoy it. I will also say that there are trigger warnings um, that I would apply, that do apply to this book. And so that may be um, something to check out if you are interested in reading this book, but want to be aware of the content. So the next book that I want to talk about, I actually read first this week, and that is I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shreya. This was for TBR prompt number 10 for my April prompts, which was a book with a purple cover. And I just cut to the point, I love this and gave this five stars. So this is a short book. You can see that it's 85 pages and it's a personal account by Vivek Shreya. She is a Canadian author, singer, uh, professor of creative writing, trans woman from South Asian descent who writes about her experiences of and reflections on misogyny, homophobia, transphobia, um, and how our experiences of gender are often shaped by cultural expectations and how our cultural expectations punish those who transgress these norms. This, this book was so thought provoking for me um, and as a, especially for me personally as a trans guy and as I navigate what it means to be male. So even as she explores how um, masculinity can be harmful and warns of the dangers of trying to set up some men as good men, as in different from the rest, um, she also names a need for masculinity to be reimagined and to celebrate gender creativity. I think that some of the experiences that she describes, many of us will, many of you will relate to um, in terms of, of harassment or um, boundary crossing, etc. That that you may experience, that may have experienced in your own journeys. I came out as trans eight years ago um, and socially, legally, and medically transitioned seven years ago. I cannot believe it has been that long. Um, and so I really read this book in kind of a conversation with my own inner, inner monologue of how to be a good man, um, which then is funny because of uh, her warning of the dangers of trying to set some men up as good men. Um, but I found I found that um, conversation between myself and this book to be um, really helpful. Out of that conversation, then I had added the detransition baby to my April TBR or my April reading um, to kind of further deepen the exploration of femininity and masculinity and gender expression and experience. Um, Detransition babies characters really express their femininity by setting themselves up to be dominated or abused by hypermasculine characters, which I didn't really connect with. And it felt less pertinent or helpful for me in my own ponderings about how to express gender. Instead, uh, I'm Afraid of Men described experiences that felt much closer to my life um, as she explored how misogyny and trans misogyny played out. Um, so for example, she talked about how in um, gay bars uh, that, that gay men would grab women's breasts without their consent and then claim that it was okay because they were gay. Uh, but, but Vivek talks about how that really is these men using their body and power to make these women feel unsafe and un unwel unwelcome in that space. Um, I did not experience that when I was a woman in gay bars. Um, but as a trans guy, I felt like I had an experience that felt um, similar. Um, I experienced more conversations than I can count in um, gay spaces where vaginas were described as disgusting, um, often just really accompanied by comically horrified faces or gagging sounds. Um, and these conversations really served to make me and maybe others with vaginas feel unwelcome or less than um, and just aren't okay. 
this misogyny feels like it fits in with the experiences that Shreya describes and the ways in which queer spaces, by setting themselves up to be permissive spaces that break boundaries, may still not feel safe or welcoming for all when these other forces are at play. So for me as a bisexual trans guy, I do regularly ponder um, how I express my masculinity. What do I do with my hands, my voice? How do I act in public um, with women or other men? Um, I'm often read as femme or gay, um, but I don't see myself as such. I, I felt like this book is one that I will um, reread at least a few times as I navigate my journey, the, a lifetime journey, right, of what my gender expression is and um, ponder really what it means to uh, be formed by these cultural experiences, but also seek to redefine masculinity in non-harmful ways. So I commend this to you five stars for I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shreya. So now let's shift from a conversation of gender norms to murder. And for prompt number one of my April TBR, I chose uh, to read Evil Dead Center, uh, which is a mystery by Carol LeFevre. Carol LeFevre was an uh, Ojibwe uh, author and activist uh, who unfortunately has passed away. And Evil Dead Center is book two in the series and is the story of Renee LaRoche. She's an Ojibwe woman who works part-time at a pol with the pol tribal police on the reservation in Northern Minnesota. She is contacted by her former girlfriend to help investigate the murder of another Ojibwe woman. And the two unearth a child pornography ring in their investigations. Along the way, Renee also has to balance the jealousy and insecurity of her current girlfriend, Samantha, a white woman who worries about Renee uh, leaving to rekindle her passion and relationship with the uh, Ojibwe ex. This book uh, started out amazing. I was drawn in immediately to the setting and characters and felt the world building was handled so smoothly and really marveled at some of the sentence structure and was taking mental notes. Um, but then after the first few chapters, it started to feel clumsier. Um, I think the middle just needed more editing. Scenes felt choppy. I wasn't always sure where we were or where one ended and another began. Um, there was a little bit of uh, head hopping as perspective shifted um, on the page um, and I wasn't ready for it. As Renee and crew close in on the bad guys, the pacing improved and it really did become a page turner again. There was still some awkward dialogue placement and some sheen, scene shifting, um, but I enjoyed the characters and the story and the mystery played out pretty well. This was also a good book to read to get a sense of place and Ojibwe culture. Um, the characters tell a lot of spiritual anecdotes and make cultural references that really help the reader to understand the community. Um, there were also Ojibwe words um, interspersed in the dialogue, and it would have been really interesting to hear this as an audiobook so that I could have heard the pronunciation and emphasis um, of these words um, instead of um, only being able to sound them out. Um, but I was glad they were there. I think you may really enjoy this book if you are a mystery lover um, who enjoys experiencing other cultures. Um, there's some really lush nature descriptions um, and uh, some good sapphic adventures as well. So uh, Evil Dead Center, I give four stars. The last book that I finished this week was The Bush Still Burns, How Spirituality and Organizing Transformed a Pastor and a Congregation by Terry Allen Moe. Um, I'm really grateful for this book. Um, you, know, you can tell by all of the little tags um, and its role in helping me to discern how to make a difference in the world. I do have the advantage of the author being my mentor and in fact that we uh, just yesterday had a chance to spend about an hour talking about the book. Um, 
while you do not maybe have that experience, maybe you do, um, I still think you'll find this um, deeply um, valuable as a resource. Um, I appreciated the reflection questions at the end of each chapter. Also the descriptions of the community organizing efforts in um, various campaigns here in Portland and some of the power analysis that went along with that. Um, also the weaving together of the concepts from community organizing with spirituality. For me personally, I am a pastor still without a church um, and I'm trying to discern what is next for me. Um, I look around the world um, and I see that it is not great. There's racism and other bigotry, there's environmental degradation degradation and really just a whole lot of people out there who are not kind to one another um, and and a lot of suffering and I do really ponder what to do to make the world a better place um, I this book was really helpful for me to think concretely what it looks like as a community to work towards justice together um, both the good stuff and the tough stuff um, and to ponder what my future looks like in this action um, this is another book that I'm definitely going to be rereading. Um, I will probably translate these flags into underlining so I don't lose my, my notes here. There's just so much more that I want to reflect on in this content. Um, this is a book that I commend to you uh, and I give this five stars. So the last book of my April TBR is Our Lives Matter, A Womanist Queer Theology, which I just barely started, uh, but I have a day to finish this within April, so we shall see. I'll have to let you know um, how that goes. I haven't read enough of it to comment on it yet, but um, I will let you know what I think of it later. In the meantime, I've started working on my May TBR. I'm very excited about it. I have a lot of ideas, but also, do you have any recommendations for me to add to my TBR? I would love to hear those. I would also love to know, like, have you read any of the books that I reviewed in this video? What did you think? Do we have the same kind of star rating or thoughts on this or, or do we diverge greatly? Um, please leave a comment and let me know. Um, I will moderate the comments so that if there's any hateful comments, I will delete those without compunction. Um, but with that, I guess it's time to sign off. Don't forget to check out the Marsha P. Johnson Institute. Uh, thanks for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you are so inclined. And see you next time. See you in the comments. Blessing to you and yours. And don't forget to drink some water.